uh, welcome back to this next video and in this video we are going to talk about the uh, incomplete dominance uh, before going into the incomplete dominance there are some important terms that you should understand uh, one of the important term that is the genotype now a genotype is a uh, part of the genetic makeup of a cell which determine one of its characteristics for example the uh, height of the pea plant so the genotype can be capital T capital T that can be uh, capital T small t or that can be small t and a small t so these are the uh, genotypes which actually uh, represent the uh, height of the plant which is one of the uh, characteristics of the pea plant another important term is the phenotype now this phenotype is actually the outward physical manifestation of the organism how that particular uh, characteristics uh, you see with naked eye for example you can actually see a tall pea plant or you can actually see a dwarf pea plant so the outward physical manifestation of the organism that is known as the uh, phenotype uh, another important term that is the allele so now the allele is actually a, a variant form of a gene uh, for example, the uh, height of the pea plant that can be tall or that can be dwarf. So one of the allele which is represented by the capital T that actually codes for the uh, tall plant, the uh, small t allele that actually is representing the dwarf. And this is only one gene. We are talking about the gene of the uh, height of the plant, but that particular gene come in two varieties that come in the capital T variety and that come in the small t variety. So a variant form of a gene that is known as the allele. Uh, homozygous, uh, when uh, two copies of the same alleles, uh, whether they are dominant or they are recessive, when they are present, that particular condition is known as the uh, homozygous condition. Uh, for example, uh, if you talk about this one, this is the capital R and this is the capital R. This is a pair of the alleles and both of the alleles, they are identical to each other. Uh, similarly, uh, this is the small r and this is the small r. Both of them, both of the alleles in this pair, they are identical to each other. So when the alleles, uh, whether they are dominant or they are recessive, but when both of the alleles, they are identical, this particular condition is known as the homozygous condition. Uh, if talk about the heterozygous condition, uh, in heterozygous condition, one of each type of the allele, like one dominant and one recessive, when this is the uh, genotype of a particular organism, that uh, a particular trait, that particular uh, condition is known as the heterozygous condition. For example, the capital R or the small r, or if you talk about the uh, height of the plant, so that will be the capital T and the small t, because both of the alleles, they are different from each other in this pair. This is known as the heterozygous condition, hetero mean uh, different from each other. Uh, complete dominance is actually uh, in one of the Mendel experiments. He found that the uh, round seed shape that is dominant or the wrinkled seed shape. And before, uh, we, before going into the incomplete dominance, you should have an understanding of the complete dominance. So uh, uh, when Mendel, he was performing his experiment, in one of the experiment, he found that the round seed shape of the pea plant that is dominant or the wrinkled seed shape. Now that means that the... Uh, seed that come in two varieties they can come in the round varieties or they can come in the wrinkled varieties but he observed that the round shape that is dominant over the that is completely dominant over the wrinkled shape uh, now what i mean by that if you talk about the round seed shape uh, the round seed shape uh, is, uh, if you talk about the genotypes, it can be capital T, capital T. That means that the round seed shape is expressing itself in the homozygous condition when both of the alleles, they are the same. But at the same time, the round seed shape is expressing itself in the heterozygous condition when there is one capital T and there is one small t and that means that both of the allele in this pair they are different from each other therefore we are talking about a heterozygous condition but in the heterozygous condition is the capital T is completely dominant over the small t therefore the shape of the seed is around now the wrinkled seed shape as that is a recessive condition that can only express itself when both of the alleles in a pair they are recessive or you can simply say that the wrinkled seed shape will be expressed in the homozygous condition only but you can deduce from these experiments is that there is one gene which is determining the shape of the seed uh, 
and this one gene have got two alleles which is represented by the capital T and the small t and this is actually coding for two different kind of the phenotypes whether that is a round phenotype or that is a wrinkled phenotype now if you see this in this particular uh, example you can actually see three kind of the genotype the capital T capital T that is one genotype the capital T small t that is another genotype the small t the small t that is another genotype so you are actually seeing three genotypes but these three genotypes that are only coding for two phenotypes the reason is that the round seed shape can express itself in two different genotypes and use these two different genotypes are coding for a single phenotype now this is not the case in the incomplete dominus now let us talk about the incomplete dominus what is happening in the incomplete dominus now in incomplete dominance uh, one allele for a specific trait is not completely dominant over the other now in the uh, ex example that i have just given you in the complete dominance here the uh, round seed shape allele that is the capital t that is completely dominant or the wrinkled seed shape allele which is represented by the small t now when the uh, uh, one allele for a specific trait is not completely dominant over the other this particular condition is known as the incomplete dominance uh, for example there is one gene that gene have got two different alleles but there are three phenotypes now if you compare that with the complete dominance there is one gene there are two alleles but there are only two phenotypes but in case of the incomplete dominance if there is one gene and that have got two alleles you'd be actually having three kinds of the phenotypes. The reason is that the heterozygote genotype that produces an offspring with a phenotype that is actually a blending of the parental trait. Now this means that in the homozygous condition, you will be getting a phenotype or you will be getting an offspring that represent a phenotype which is different than both of the parents and that is actually a blending of the parental trait. Let me give you an example of the incomplete dominance. One of the famous example of the incomplete dominance is the flower color in the snapdragon plants. Now if you talk about the flower color in the snapdragon plants, the dominant allele that produces the red color is not completely expressed over the recessive allele that produces the white color. Now this means that the dominant allele which code for the red color, the recessive allele which code for the white color, the dominant is allele is not completely dominant over the white color. What I mean by that? If you talk about the heterozygous condition, in the heterozygous condition you are not getting a red color of the flower, you are not getting the white color of the flower, but you are getting a third phenotype which is actually pink in color. What, this, what I mean by that is that if you talk about the red color of the flower, that will only be expressed in the homozygous condition when the genotype is capital R and the capital R. The white phenotype will be only expressed when there is homozygous condition. That means that the genotype is small r and the small r. But if you talk about the heterozygous condition containing one dominant allele and one recessive allele, the capital R and the small r, when this is in the heterozygous condition, it is going to give you pink color, which is different than the red and the white, but that is actually a blend of the red and white, which give you a pink uh, phenotype. Now let us uh, solve some of the uh, problem of the incomplete dominance. Uh, for example, uh, if you are given a problem that uh, cross a homozygous red uh, flower with a homozygous white flower. So the first thing you have to do is that you have to find out the genotypes. Now the homozygous red can only be in one genotype which is the capital R and the capital R. The homozygous white that can only be present in one genotype that will be the small r and the small r. Uh, when you solve the Punnett square, the first thing you have to do is that you have to make the gametes of the parent. Uh, I'll share the link uh, of my video on the Punnett square. So you should see that to, to get a complete understanding how the Punnett square works. So here, the first thing we have to do is that we have to make the gametes of the parent. So the first parent, the uh, genotype is capital R and capital R. And uh, the Mendel law of segregation states that during the gamete formation, 
the uh, members of the pair of the gene they get separate from each other and each member gets into one of the gametes so if you talk about the gametes of this particular parent it can only uh, produce one kind of the gamete that is the capital R because the other gametes say for example if these two members get separated from each other out of the gametes they are going to get the capital R uh, allele so you can simply say that this particular parent produce only a single kind of the gamete which you can represent by the capital R same is the case with the second parent as both of the uh, members of this pair they are identical to each other so if they get separate from each other during the gamete formation all of the gametes they are only going to get a single kind of the allele which will be the uh, small r and the small r now once you have uh, made the gametes and the other thing you have to do is you have to cross them outside the punnett square this particular side is showing you the gametes of one parent for example this particular parent this is the capital r and capital r and the top of the punnett square it show you the gamete of the other parents and the other parent is producing the gamete which have the small r and the small r so when you cross them, the interior of the Punnett square is actually showing you the product of the fertilization. So when you cross them, when this gamete from this parent combined with this gamete from this parent, this will be the capital R and the small r. If this combined with this one, this is going to be the capital R and the small r. If this gamete combined with this one, this is going to give you the capital R and the small r. Similarly, this combined with this one, that is going to give you the capital R and the small r. As we are talking about the incomplete dominance, that means that if the genotype that is uh, heterozygous, as we can see in all of the cases, the genotype that is actually uh, heterozygous, so that is going to produce a third phenotype. So in this particular case, the third phenotype that is produced is pink color of the flower. And if you, as you can see that in this cross, all of the offspring, they are heterozygous. That means that all of the offsprings, all of the offspring that are produced by this cross, they are going to produce the uh, pink flowers. And as you can see that in one of the panel that is producing the uh, red color of the flower, the other one is producing the white, but they are only producing that in the homozygous condition. So when there is heterozygous condition, a third kind of the, a phenotype in this particular case the pink that is appearing now if you are given that uh, cross a heterozygous uh, flower with a heterozygous flower as you can see over here the genotype will be the capital r and the small r and this will be the capital r and the small r all of these problems they are based on the flower color of the snape dragon plants so if this is the uh, heterozygous one if this is the heterozygous one, that means that both of these parents, they are producing the pink flowers. So the first thing again you have to do is that you have to make the gametes of the parents. So if you talk about this one, this particular parent can actually produce two kinds of the gametes. In some of the gametes, uh, in 50% of the gametes, you will be having the capital R. 50% of the gametes, you will be having the small r. Because if this particular pair, if the member, they get separate from each other, this capital R will go into one gamete this small r will go into the other gamete so it can actually produce two kind of the gametes similarly as the other parent is identical that again that is going to produce two kind of the gene uh, two kind of the gametes having the capital r and the small r now when you cross them again this particular side is showing you the uh, gametes of one parent and the top of the punnett square is showing you the gametes of the other parents now if you cross them this capital r can combine with this one this capital R can combine with this small r, this small r can combine with this capital R, and this small r can combine with this small r. Now if you look at over here, you are actually getting different kind of the uh, phenotypes over here. Now one of the uh, genotype you are getting, that is the capital R, capital R, like one fourth of them, like out of four, one of the genotype is the capital R and the capital R. And we all know that the capital R and the capital R, they produce an offspring, uh, which is actually producing uh, red uh, color flowers. If you talk about the second one, if you talk about this one, the uh, uh, capital R and the small r, out of four, they are half. 
two of the uh, genotypes, two of the offspring they are having the genotype, the capital R and the small r. And if we all know that when the condition that is in the heterozygous one, that is going to produce the uh, pink flowers. And the last one, we are getting the small r and the small r, this one, again, one fourth of the offspring, they are having this genotype and they are going to produce the uh, white color of the uh, flowers. So when you cross uh, a heterozygous, uh, a pink flower to a pink flower, you can expect the red, pink and white offsprings, all of the, uh, all of the colors of the snapdragon, you can actually get from uh, this particular cross. Uh, if there is another uh, question, for example, if you cross the homozygous red with a heterozygous flower, that means this is the red flower, uh, a plant producing the red flower, and this is a plant producing the pink flowers. So what offspring you can expect? Again, if you talk about the uh, parent number one, if you talk about the gametes at both of the allele, they are identical to each other. That is going to produce one kind of the gamete, the capital R and the capital R. If you talk about this one, uh, that is heterozygous. It can produce two kinds of the gametes, the capital R and the small r. So if you are going to cross them, this particular side is showing you the gametes of one parent. This is showing you the gametes of the uh, other parent. So if you cross them, what you can actually get is the capital R and the capital R, the capital R and the uh, small r, the capital R and the capital R, and the capital R and the small r. Now this means that looking at this particular cross, one half of the genotypes and they are the capital R and the capital R, one over here and one over here, half of them, half of the offspring they are having this particular genotype and we know that the capital R and capital R that produces uh, are red flowers. If you talk about this one, the capital R and the small r, again uh, half of the offspring they are having this particular genotype, so as this is the heterozygous form this particular offspring are going to produce the pink flowers. If you cross the homozygous white with a heterozygous flower, that means a flower producing the uh, pink flowers, what you can actually get in the offsprings. If you look at this one, again this is homozygous, both of the uh, alleles they are identical to each other, so the parent number one can actually produce only a single kind of the gametes, uh, having the small r the other kind of the parent that is in the heterozygous condition that can actually produce two kind of the gametes, the capital R and the uh, small r. So when you cross them, this particular side is showing you the gametes of one parent, this is showing you the gametes of the other parents. So when you cross them, this capital R can combine with this small r, this small r can combine with this small r, this capital R can combine with this small r, and this small r can combine with this small r. If you look at the um, offsprings, half of the offsprings, and they are actually having this kind of the genotype, half of them, half of the offspring, they are having the uh, heterozygous genotype, so they are actually going to produce the pink flowers. If you talk about this one, half of the uh, offsprings, they are having the small r, small r genotype, and we know that they are going to produce the uh, white flowers. Uh, we will talk about the codominance in the uh, next video.